Good morning, everybody. This is the live market open for Tuesday, December 8th. I'm Yochel, I'm Forex Crunch and Market Movers podcast, doing the show as usual for fxstreet.com. Uh, today, as usual, we'll talk about recent developments in markets, so sh- show some charts and levels, discuss the next 24 hours, and of course, answer your questions. I already see a few of you here, already chatting here with uh, uh, Sinatra. Anyway, um, if you can't see the chat box under the video, please go to tlk.io slash fx3 hyphen forex hyphen live hyphen video. Okay, what did we have yesterday? Relatively calm day in terms of figures, but interesting in terms of moves. We had a European Syntax business confidence miss, but that wasn't that important. It didn't have real impact on the euro. We had a, a crash in oil prices. That's actually the big event. Okay, so let's take a look at that before, uh, we, because it has wider impact on other currencies as well. Another, uh, so this is oil price. This is WTI crude oil, and Brent follows the same pattern. As you can see, in the past few weeks, it, it has been ranging between 40 and 40 to 70, 43, 40. And then after the OPEC meeting, it began crashing all the way down, lost the previous August low of 37 to 73. Currently still battling with this line, but basically it's at the lowest levels since um, since 2009, since the peak of the financial crisis when it reached around $35. Uh, why am I talking beginning the show about commodities and not about Forex? Because first of all, it also triggered a huge move in the Canadian dollar. Um, Canadian dollar also at the lowest since Let's take a look here. Canadian dollar lowest since uh, 2004. Okay, that's 11 years. It broke above the previous high I was talking about so many times. 134.60. This is a clear break, not a false one. We've seen uh, this peak back here in September, then another attempt in November. Now clear break to the upside. 135.22 is the current level. After already, yeah, well, it's actually making new highs as we speak. Um, and 134.60 turns into support, okay? So, good morning, everybody. And, um, yeah, that's the main event that we had yesterday. This is, of course, a belated a full reaction, if you wish, to the OPEC meeting on Friday that didn't result in any uh, production cut. It actually showed lots of differences between the members. We had the Japanese final GDP coming out much better than expected, actually. So... This, this is good news for Japan. And also, it, it makes a difference because actually now, according to the new figures, Japan is not in recession, okay? So, uh, this is, of course, why can't I see it here? Anyway, Japan is not in a recession. And that, of course, lowers the chances of uh, um, seeing more monetary stimulus from the Bank of Japan. So, if we look at dollar yen, we haven't seen much reaction because that was more or less as expected. We're seeing the same old range, 122.20 to 123.60. Currently a bit higher in the range, but as you can see, this is very, very nice range trading. In the past, we had much more limited range trading with dollar yen. Much It wasn't that defined as this time, but this one is a nice range. I still believe we have a chance of a break to the upside because of the US rate hike, but um, in terms of the influence coming from Japan, I don't see that coming. Okay, so yeah, we have it here. So quarter over quarter annualized, it's actually a rise of 1%. And if you look at the um, uh, quarter over quarter, it was initially published at minus 0.2 and currently it's plus 0.3. So the Japanese economy grew in Q3. That's good news. So last time we heard that it uh, contracted in Q2 and Q3, okay? So two consecutive quarters means a recession. And now uh, without this, it's um, it's no recession in Japan, okay? Next on, we had Australian, um, well, the NAB consumer, a business confidence it came out a bit, a bit better than expected, five points. But that didn't help the Aussie dollar because of two reasons. First of all, Chinese trade balance was quite negative, okay? So imports came out better than expected, but they still showed a drop of 8.7% year over year. 
Uh, exports dropped 6.8%. That's worse than expected. And the trade balance itself was worse than expected. So all in all, the Chinese slowdown is bad news for Australia. Uh, the move, but that's not the only thing pushing the Aussie dollar down. We talked several times about the 7280 line, which is still a very, very clear separator of ranges, as you can see. Okay, so, um, resistance here, support here, a few attempts, uh, support held, and eventually support collapsed, and the pair fell exactly to the next uh, support line we talked about, 7220. So very nice technical trading uh, Aussie dollar. What we had here is other commodity prices falling together with oil. So we have uh, repercussions from OPEC, not only on, on, um, on the Canadian dollar, but also on the Aussie dollar. And um, also um, uh, the trade balance of China also weighed on the Aussie dollar. Okay, so these are the developments we had there. so far. Let's look at other currency charts. Pound dollar is still looking for a direction, holding above 150, sliding back down. It had it enjoyed the draggy drag, the boost the draggy gave on, for the euro had some kind of influence on the pound, and so did positive services PMI. <clears throat> However, since then we're seeing it um, sort of erode. Yesterday, Mark Carney talked, but it was about financial stability, not about a monetary policy in the UK, so that had no impact. But today is different. Today we have at 9.30 GMT, first uh, significant event for today, we have industrial output out of the United Kingdom, industrial output, manufacturing, output, production, whatever you wish to call it. So we have all these figures here. So far we had from uh, the UK this morning, the Halifax house price index, it dropped 0.2%. Year over year still a rise of 9%. So house prices are still rising in the UK. I guess uh, some of you coming from uh, the United Kingdom know this uh, more uh, closely. Anyway, um, manufacturing production is expected to rise just a bit uh, um, year over year, stay flat month over month. Industrial output is expected to rise 1.3 year over year and stay flat month over month. So expectations are quite low for the manufacturing sector. We've seen also not so impressive manufacturing PMIs in the UK, um, we do tend to see a reaction, even though these are figures for October and we're already in December, okay? So pound dollar, 150.44, resistance, high resistance at 151.60, support at 151. We've already seen a significant dip above, uh, sorry, <laughs> significant dip below 150 and 149.50 is clear, clear support over there. Uh, later on, we have Canadian housing starts at 115 and one at 130 building permits. It's another figure for the Canadian dollar, but for the loonie, the huge focus is also, is of course on oil prices. Yesterday we had some announcements from the new Canadian government, relatively new one, uh, changing a few taxes. Uh, so far, I don't see a real impact from that. It's mostly uh, oil prices. At three GMT, we have US jolts. Job openings, this is a figure for the month of October. Uh, so it's a bit late. It's not like the non from payrolls. And it's expected to show, uh, well, worse than September, slightly worse, for drop from 5.526 to exactly 5.5. All in all, the, the, you can see the trend here, very positive trend, very good um, advance, uh, more job openings. Another subcomponent here is the... Um, is the level of quits. So if someone quits his job, her job, to find a new one, that's uh, either for uh, a job that, that pays more, and it also reflects confidence uh, in general. So let's see if this mo uh, figure moves up, but all in all, rate hike in the United States is more or less priced in. Okay, um, so what else do we have? Uh, well, uh, 10 to six, uh, Bank of Canada's governor, Stefan Pelos talks. Let's see if he talks about oil prices, if he talks about other things over there, because uh, Canadian dollar is at new lows. So it's uh, every Canadian figure has a bit more of an impact because the loonie is vulnerable. And then the other side of the day at half past midnight, we have Australian home loans and Chinese CPI, less important than trade balance, less important than other figures, but 
still worth watching. So we have continued focus on uh, commodity prices today because we have more figures related to Canada and Australia, but also from the UK and from the United States. So if you wish, quite an eclectic mix. Okay, let's cover a few more currency pairs and I'll answer your questions. We talked about the Euro, the Pound, the Yen, Canadian Dollar, of course, Australian Dollar, New Zealand Dollar. In comparison, has been relatively stable, finding it's, uh, well, it fell from the highs. It fell from resistance, clear resistance here at 67.90. Okay, technical behavior of Kiwi Dollar is very nice. And it's back to the previous uh, range of 66 to 67, still above the previous range uh, well, the one beforehand between 65 and 66. So the Kiwi, I think, is holding up quite nicely. Okay. Uh, dollar Swiss uh, under parity. Uh, on Thursday, there is a rate decision in Switzerland. They decide about the LIBOR rate. Decide about other rates. It's currently minus, point, uh, z minus 0 0.75, extremely low. Many expect, not many, most expect no change, but some expect that because the ECB did cut the rates, okay, we had a huge disappointment from Draghi, but they did cut the rates. The negative deposit rate is now minus 30, that the Swiss National Bank will react as well to show it cares. Well, not only to show it cares, but to maintain a weak Swiss franc. So let's see if we do have that, we could see a dollar Swiss uh, rising back. It has been at much higher levels, as you can see. Went up the stairs, fell down the elevator, and... Um, so if we have some action there on the interest rates, on more intervention on Thursday, we could have action in dollar Swiss. But remember, the Swiss intervene in markets. Euro Swiss, very, very stable within the range. Euro pound, uh, still on high ground, 72.23. Resistance over there at 72.65. Support 71.70, I would say. Oh, let's change a few lines here. I think we have too many lines, right? So I would say this is better support, 7160. Uh, Euro, yen, 13380. Uh, high ground after Draghi, 13316.15 provides support, 13420. Still resistance despite this uh, break. Further support, 13150. Resistance, 135. 60 okay and one of your favorites pound yen 185.60 despite this move higher i still see 186 as some kind of resistance and support 184.30 183.90 and then 183.30 uh, okay these are the levels to watch uh let's see you see quite a few questions or comments here from EFZFX, sorry, anyway, look, latent insider trading before public eyes. PIMCO, a leading global investment management firm, has retained the world-renowned experts on economic and political issues to form a PIMCO Global uh, Advisory Board. The board members will contribute their insights to the firm from the global economic, political, strategic developments and the relevance for financial markets. There, um, Members of the board are Ben Bernanke, who will serve as chairman, Gordon Brown, ex-prime minister in the, of the UK, Nag Kok Song, Annie Marie Slaughter, and Jean-Claude Trichet, who used to be the governor of the president of the bank, uh, of the European Central Bank. Anne Marie Slaughter, former director of policy planning from the US State Department, and Bernanke is still with Citadel High Frequency Trading. Yeah, um, these guys leave the uh, public office, which doesn't pay too much, and they get huge salaries at these um, places. Uh, so uh, the big the question to ask is: Did they have? A, did they provide? Are they being rewarded for something they gave to these institutions beforehand? We know that sometimes uh, central bankers meet with. Uh, private companies, so there's room for suspicion over there, or are they just taken to these companies because they're experts, or because they know people, or because they have contacts? So it's a it's a very gray line. Um, anyway, um, 
I, I don't know if I would be in their place. It's probably hard to, um, well, resist the temptation. Uh, these people, Bernanke gets, I don't know, a quarter of a million dollars per, per lecture, if I'm not mistaken. So, and that's, I guess, about his annual salary at the Fed. So, um, is there things okay? A question about currencies. Well, do you expect a rate cut in the New Zealand NZD? The answer is yes. Uh, there is a good chance, or very, very high chance, that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand will cut the interest rate from 2.75 to um, to uh, 2.5 percent. And if that happens, that's already priced in. I don't see the Kiwi falling on that. We have to watch two things there. First of all. Um, 2.5% is the low, um, is the cycle low, or the multi-decade low, okay? It was the interest rate last year before they began a cycle of rate hikes in New Zealand, okay? It went from 2.5 all the way to 3.5. So uh, if it falls to 2.5, that's still within the range. Now, if they hint, say, uh, threaten, whatever you wish to call, that they're going to cut rates further to new historic lows, that's already significant. That could hurt the Kiwi dollar. That's one thing to watch. Second thing to watch is what they say about the exchange rate. Now, the exchange rate in general fell quite a lot, but in recent uh, the recent month or so, it went up from the highs. Okay. Now, are they okay with it? Do they say it it goes hand in hand with the fall of, in commodity prices? Something we heard in Australia, or something along those lines, or they say that um, they're not happy with the recent rise. It should fall even more, and um, and this would, of course, signal that a they're willing to intervene, b they're willing to cut rates, uh, and c uh, that the New Zealand dollar is going to fall down. Okay, so we have the interest rate at tomorrow at eight GMT, and then I think five minutes later, and uh, we have a press the press conference by Graham Wheeler, the governor of the RBNZ speaks. So it all depends on the statement, not on the interest rate. We could have a surprise of no cut. And in that case, the New Zealand dollar would surge higher. But according to all their hints, they're expected to cut rates. Okay. So sort of a small preview for the rate decision from New Zealand uh, tomorrow. In general, we have uh, New Zealand dollar. This is the range uh, sort of bigger lines to watch 65 and 64 20 on the downside on the top side 69 is is uh, resistance up there okay remember that new zealand exports milk milk prices uh, according to the auction released last week they actually ticked up and went up after three consecutive falls very different story than iron ore copper and of course oil prices so that's a positive for uh, for New Zealand, in that context, I uh, think also other countries exporting agricultural goods can fare better than ones exporting other ones. Okay, um, question here, um, perhaps following what PIMCO do may, might be a slight advantage on what market may go. Yeah, uh, on, on one hand, they have more insider information, if you wish, or more connections with the right people on the other hand they have a lot of money to move so they can't so they're like an uh, expression goes an elephant in a china store uh they uh they can do a lot of damage if they make big moves okay uh so yeah anyway oil prices made quite a big fall i wanted to show you beforehand um uh, sort of take a bigger look at oil prices. So around the financial crisis, they fell here to, uh, well, all the way down to 32.70, okay? And that's that was seen in, uh, in early 2009. And, but this was sort of a sharp fall and these levels were last seen, what we're seeing now and beforehand, apart from 2009, they were last seen only back in 2004 when the Canadian dollar was also very weak and you can see that prices around between 10 and 20 dollars were last seen uh, in 2002 and then we had this range in the 90s that's really ancient history the levels we're seeing now because we did have inflation over those years 
so um, anyway, this has huge implications, of course, in the short term on the Canadian dollar, also on the Australian dollar, but also on oil producing countries of all sorts and it could have geopolitical implications. It could have, um, let's talk about Saudi Arabia, the biggest uh, producer, over 10, billion, uh, 10 million uh, barrels per day. Very rich country, very influential country in the Middle East. Um, they produce, uh, they spend a lot of their cash to control the population, to, uh, well, also flatter the population, make life easier, but also keep control. They have the Saudi real is pegged to the US dollar. Okay, I think it's 375. Um, there is some talk that they will have to unpeg it because if uh, they have less income in US dollars and they would want to spend more Saudi reals, so they would need to enjoy a weakening of the exchange rate. But that could be a big earthquake for investors and a big shakeup and, and Saudis would be able to purchase less important goods. Okay, anyway, the political situation there um, in fighting within the royal family, things could, uh, so far everything is very stable, but things can develop there. Another country that is influenced, of course, is Russia. Now, uh, Putin also sort of semi-authoritarian uh, regime or not, not the kind of Western democracy, let's put it this way, intervening in Syria, intervening in the Ukraine, uh, also needs to keep the population happy. Now, with falling oil prices, uh, falling uh, Russian ruble, imported goods are not as uh, available as they were before. So you might see developments over there also in 2016. And also other countries, of course, talked about Canada, also Western countries like the United States, which this route in oil prices began because shale production in the United States was higher. Okay, we had a combination of very high, high oil prices, which encouraged investment and, and drilling and uh, investing more money and uh, higher cost of production because because of the higher oil prices and we had also the low interest rates in the united states which made borrowing very easy and this has been reversed so far of course we have we've seen only few bankruptcies we've seen the less efficient rigs in the united states shut down but there are still enough efficient ones uh but at some point uh this could also hurt the u.s economy uh, jobs lost in the mining sector so far it hasn't been huge but we've already seen that and also um we could see less uh, production over there in the united states um that could also have an impact and of course defaults in in bonds of these companies that raised money in the bond markets very very cheaply now some of these are junk bonds and this could be a bubble uh, waiting to explode as well so uh, this is a bit of preview of 2016, if you wish, but I believe that low oil prices will persist. Of course, there's less investment now, so less investment now means less production in the future, but this future could take a long time. Now, regarding supply, we have uh, less demand. Uh, sorry, regarding demand, we have less demand in in uh, China, but on the other hand, we have less. We have more demand in India, so I believe supply in general will. will sorry, demand will remain quite balanced. And for supply, it'll take quite some time to uh, drop in order to see oil prices rising. Uh, Russia expects oil prices to reach $50 on average in 2016. It seems quite optimistic at the moment. I see more downside pressure. Okay, so that was a long segue about oil. Let's see, I think you have some questions. Uh, perhaps following what PIM could do, maybe a slight advantage, yeah. In our world, we go to the to prison. Yeah, uh, my sound keeps dropping. Everyone else, the same problem. Guys, can you hear me well? Um, I haven't I haven't been moving too much from the mic, so I I hope everything sounds okay. But if uh, if there is a problem, please let me know in the chat. Anyway, uh, looking forward to more questions. We have uh, Sinatra here, Tilan, Will. Jax, anybody has any questions? I don't think we talked actually too much about euro dollar. Uh, so let's talk about euro dollar. Euro dollar yesterday, uh, well, Draghi pushed it all the way from 105.20 to 
um, 109.80, okay, 460 pips, all right? It was a huge, huge rise. Then we had some falling down. We had Draghi do some damage control, talking in New York that the ECB is ready to do more, that the door isn't closed. And this calculation I talked about yesterday, that actually the reinvestments add a lot of money into the system, 680 in total reinvestments and uh, extension of QE, okay? So, um, okay, I'll talk about pound yen in a moment, just finish about euro dollar. Thanks, Dylan. Um, very glad to hear the sound is okay. Um, we had this fall, I talked about 108.30 and I warned about false breaks. It was a deeper false break. Why false break? First of all, you can see 108.30 support right here in November, then resistance in November. Okay, first attempt to, sorry, to break this line works very well. But yesterday we had a drop, even a drop under 108, under the round level of 108. But it was short-lived and from there we saw the pair rise back up. Um, I believe that markets still don't believe Draghi, they're still disappointed and the euro is still bid. This might change. It'll take some time for Draghi and his friends to convince markets that he's really ready to do more. Um, uh, thanks for the kind words, Nadra. And um, eventually, I think it'll it'll get into markets and I think euro the euro will slide back down. But for now, and it's holding on to high ground, 108.77. Let's talk about lines. Uh, 108.90, 109.50 is significant, and 110. 110, 109.50. I see 108.30 is still working as support, followed by 107.60, 107.10, and 106.30 to the downside. Okay. No special events from um, in, in the Eurozone today. Question about pound yen. All right, okay, first of all, it's on the move. Great timing, so uh, just fell under 185. Um, flirting with this level. Look, it went above 186, but I see this also as some kind of uh, false break, if you wish. I see the round level of 186 still working as, um, as resistance, but if you wanna be sure, it's 186.20 because 186.20 also worked there. But you can see why I like the round number of 86, not only because it's round, but because it was support here, resistance here, resistance here once again, and also only here we have this kind of false break. Okay, so to the upside again, it's 188.10, the high in September. On the downside, we can see, look how nice this line is, 184.30, support, support, and support. Here we had a break to 183.90, which was also support here. So in, ter in technical terms, this pair is behaving nicely. What do I expect from the pair? I think that the sell-off in the, the, the sell in the British pound because of the Bank of England's dov dovishness is a bit uh, over, overreacted uh, and, and well, exaggerated. And I believe that um, <clears throat> the pound has room to the upside. The yen is not that weak. We've seen Japan out of recession, so I believe that um, in Japan we'll have uh, um, sort of the stability of the Japanese yen. I'm still, my, my bias is, is bullish on this pair, but uh, I mean, fundamentally, but it's not, not a clear cut, not a, you know, um, like I have in the Canadian dollar that I see its weakness, for example, okay? So hope this provides, um, yeah, it's the beast, it's the dragon. Uh, question, I've been short on Aussie Swiss. We talked many times about it. And after some topping action last week, it finally made some money. Okay, glad to hear that. Although it was high risk trade because I was gambling on Draghi not delivering enough. Well, first of all, nice that you got it right on Draghi. I got it wrong on Draghi, and I'm not the only one, of course. <clears throat> At least I'm in good company with Goldman Sachs. <laughs> anyway, um, let's look at Aussie Swiss. Yeah, and as you said, 
yeah, we've seen it similar to euro dollar or similar, sorry, inverse of euro dollar or similar to uh, the US dollar against the Swiss franc, rising up the stairs and then crashing. Okay, so now it's even falling to lower ground because of the slide in commodities, the, the disappointing trade balance, the weakness in the Australian dollar in general. So it's falling under, well, it's quite similar levels to the greenback because greenback against the Swiss because it's around parity over there. Sorry, it's similar levels to the Aussie against the US dollar. Anyway, uh, further support here, 7116. Uh, 70 to 40, some kind of resistance. Um, yeah, but not, I, it's not as nice technically. This line is, is nicer. 70, 50, I would say is stronger support. Resistance, mm, 73 looks weak. 74, 20 seems more, more serious on this pair. Anyway, uh, yeah, indeed, it's the Aussie against the Swiss franc, and the most important currency here is the euro, of the most, the biggest influence here. Okay, so glad you made some pips. Um, on one hand, we could see the euro eroding its gains. On the other hand, we have commodity prices weighing on the Aussie, and third factor here is the Swiss decision on. Uh, on, on Thursday, the Swiss rate decision. So we have um, a mixed picture, a bit complicated this week for this pair. More questions? Let's talk about a few more events this week in general. Yeah, so today we had Japanese GDP uh, coming out better than expected sort of pushing back any potential action from the Bank of Japan. Chinese trade balance showing weakness, hurting the Australian dollar, even though China has stabilized, it's not the crisis that we had a few months ago. Today we have US jobs as another jobs figure for the Fed, but it has become less meaningful after the non from payrolls was excellent on Friday. Well, not excellent, but certainly better than expected. Very nice. Tomorrow we have, uh, we begin the series of three rate decisions in 24 hours. So we have uh, New Zealand um, expected to uh, cut, in New Zealand rates are expected to be cut, 275 to 250. Uh, sorry. Thursday, well, before the next rate decision, we have Australian a jobs report in Australia. Let's see if the, where the Aussie moves afterwards. A Swiss rate de decision Thursday morning. There is a potential there of a rate cut as well from minus 75 basis points to minus 100 points to minus 1%. UK rate decision important because the main, uh, meeting minutes are released, released there as well. And Friday we have a focus on the US consumer with, um, uh, with uh, retail sales for October. Uh, sorry, retail sales for November, that's Black Friday, and um, the um, consumer confidence preliminary for December for the Christmas shopping. Okay, any more questions? We're seeing dollar CAD make it to higher highs, 135.30. Um, some analysts are talking about 136, but basically uh, as some kind of resistance, but basically there's not too much limit over there. Question, what do analysts expect for oil now? When it was trading at 95, they expected 150. Uh, probably they expect mid-20 now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a headline grabbing at its best, as you mentioned. So uh, I think Goldman Sachs were talking about something like $15 or $20, I'm not sure, but they were wrong about Draghi. I'm not expecting it to fall too much. And my reasoning is that uh, oil prices are a bit less flexible than they used to be. That's because uh, shale production, uh, sorry, are not as wild as they used to be because shale production is more flexible. Okay, 
because if the price of oil falls, it's very easy for those producers in the United States to shut down rigs, to cut production quite easily, and uh, when prices go up, to um, enhance production quite easily. That's very different from traditional oil fields like we have in Saudi Arabia and Libya, or the ones over there, older ones in Texas, or you name it. So uh, this means that uh, there is, I think we won't have such wild price changes, okay? Now, lower oil prices are good for the consumers, but they can have impact on oil producing countries. And the United States is now in, in the mix between, on the one hand, it's a net benefit, right? I mean, it's better for the US consumer, better for the economy to have lower oil prices, but it's not 100% gain. There's always this, um, this loss from from oil, uh, sorry, from uh, from the industry that loses workers and from the risks to bond markets and things like that. So I believe it'll sort of uh, stay below 40 or flirt with 40, but I don't think it'll go below 30. But who knows? Anything can happen next year as well. Okay, uh, question here. I'd have to bet, I believe it should make a bottom around 32, 34 in Q1. 2016, yeah, they, Goldman Sachs said uh, 20, you can make money if you go against what Goldman Sachs says. Yeah, uh, they've been known to trade against their clients in the past, so who knows what's going on there. Uh, what's your thought about natural gas? Well, I uh, haven't been following that. If you want more in-depth about commodities, please uh, check out uh, tradingenergy.com. It's uh, the site run by Lear Coin, my associate in Market Movers podcast, and he is very, very knowledgeable about natural gas, the different types of natural gas, seasonalities, backwardation, contango, all, all these things. Okay, so you say till in 32 to 34. Okay, that uh, makes sense. It's I I can uh, buy into that uh, into that estimate. Okay. All right. Meanwhile, uh, oil prices are well stabilizing around the August lows, but not going anywhere fast. Euro dollar, I think it's enjoying also a bit of safe haven flows with the falling oil prices, but not too much. Okay. Any more uh, questions? Yeah, we have a question from Dylan. Perhaps we need final capitulation in oil. Many stops are probably set below the 2009 low. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's around that's 3270. Yeah, perhaps we'll we'll see that uh, sweep of 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 uh, of these stops and then a bounce back up. It's certainly possible. Lots of speculation in oil markets. Anyway, it's quite interesting to follow. Uh, we talked a lot today about oil, but um, and not because it has also implications on other currencies. Question, can you tell this new web page for indexes? Uh, any web page for indexes? Well, you can uh, follow FX Street. They have uh, lots of information over there, all the types of currency pairs and indices. and. Um, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, for commodities, please go Trading Energy. Let me put that uh, link in the chat box. TradingNRG.com. See that I typed it correctly. Yeah, so here you, right. here you go. Okay, that's for uh, commodities, but you have various indices on fxread.com and um, yeah you're welcome and if you guys are interested um, I wanted to ask you guys something I forgot now oh we've been doing this these uh, these previews weekly previews uh, every Friday now um, and these are also recorded 
separately and then uh, sorry these are published separately as clips only for the preview and republished on fx street and also on forex crunch so if you could provide some feedback on that if uh, you use it to prepare for the new week or not it's too long it's too short any feedback is of course very welcome okay Anyway, yeah, it's uh, if you don't have any more questions, I'll get to. Okay, so this is the wrap up for the live market open for Tuesday, December 8th. Uh, we had the main feature in markets was the crash in oil prices. We've talked about that quite a lot in the program. Uh, we fell below the August lows and back to lows last seen in 2009. That's a sort of cascading related reaction to OPEC on Friday. It had an immediate impact on the Canadian dollar. Dollar CAD is rising to new highs, 135.26 at the moment. Uh, the critical level it broke above is 134.60. And uh, the, probably the sky is the limit. Uh, so... That's the main feature. It has also some implications on the Aussie dollar, which fell one support level lower from last 72.80 and last seven, and now it's finding support at 72.25. Um, but in Australia, we also had an impact from Chinese trade balance that was disappointing, uh, especially exports, but not only that. So these are recent developments. In addition, uh, we had Japanese final GDP coming out better than expected, coming out positive. Uh, so Japan contracted only for one quarter. And, and that's, of course, uh, good news for Japan. And that means less stimulus, more stability for the Japanese yen. Dollar yen, very well in range, 123.06. Resistance, 123.60. Support, 122.20. This wide range of 140 pips has been going on for quite some time. It's not as frustrating as previous ranges in dollar yen. Okay, um, what else do we have? Well, let's talk about a few currency pairs. Euro dollar made this dip under 108 yesterday, under 108.30, which is support. Now it's rising once again. It still doesn't know if to believe Draghi or not. Um, um, it's 108.90 is resistance, 109.50 more important than 110, very important. 108.30, 107.60, and 107.10. On the downside, Draghi tried to do some damage control so far with little success. Okay. Uh, pound dollar, currently 150.30, sliding down. 150 support followed by 149 resistance, high resistance at 151.60. That leads us to today's events. At 9.30 GMT, we have industrial production industrial output out of the UK, manufacturing production. Expectations are relatively low for the manufacturing sector, and that's not surprising. We've also seen the PMIs, the, the Purchasing Managers Index for the, um, the, the manufacturing sector come out weak. And uh, this has an impact, even though it's for the month of October. And we have some more figures for Canada now that the Canadian dollar is sensitive in general and moving quite a lot. Housing starts, and 15 minutes later, at 1.30 GMT, we have building permits. Uh, and the uh, figure for the Fed comes at 3 GMT, the JOLTS. It's a Fed favorite, even though it's for October and we had the NFP already for November. It's still important. The Fed looks as it, at it as a wider um, impact for, uh, wider move for, um, wider figure for the job market. Look there at the number of quits. This shows confidence. More from Canada at 10 to 6 GMT, Stefan Pelos talks. And then we have focus to Australia, Australian home loans, and Chinese CPI. Okay, so today is a bit busier than yesterday, and tomorrow and Thursday will be the busiest of the week. Um, these are the events for today. Let's talk about a few more um, currency pairs in the wrap-up before we head off. Um, uh, Kiwi dollar is relatively stable at 66.45, supported 66, resistance 67, 67.90, standing out among commodity currencies. Um, dollar Swiss 
uh, battling with parity ahead of the rate decision in Switzerland on Thursday, there is a chance that we will see uh, another rate cut deeper into negative territory over in Switzerland. Okay, so that's it uh, for uh, the wrap. I see we have uh, more questions. Uh, which weekly outlooks? Um, on Friday, we did this preview for next week's events, uh, which is already now this week. And it was published as a separate uh, clip. Uh, so I'll try to look for the link for that. And uh, anyway, any feedback is welcome. What pairs to watch today? Well, the Canadian dollar with oil prices and also the pounds. Well, first of all, the pound and then uh, the which has the manufacturing production, industrial production. And then, of course, the um, uh, Canadian dollar ongoing stuff with oil prices and a few figures in the speech from Pelos. Okay. Another question. Uh, yesterday's low on euro was 38.2 Fibonacci retracement from Thursday's big move. Okay. That's an interesting point. I didn't examine that. Uh, so I guess now the technicals are more in play than the fundamentals. Thank you very much for that comment. Uh, in general, if you guys, you want to put uh, some charts, links to ch your charts, and we can talk about them. Of course, you're always, always welcome. All right. So uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming and asking questions. And um, uh, we'll be here tomorrow. I wish everybody a safe and successful trading day. And uh, that's it. Bye-bye.